Today I'm going to be reviewing the all power R1500 power station. This is one of the few power stations that uses lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery instead of lithium ion NMC battery. The advantage of lithium iron phosphate battery is that it's safer to handle and you can cycle it more so it has a lot more cycle than the regular lithium ion battery. This power station has a lot of bells and whistles so I'm going to put it to the test today. First let's go over the physical dimensions. 16 inches wide, 10 inches deep and 12 inches tall. It weighs 36 and a half pounds. On the front panel we've got four AC outlets and they have very nice and thick rubber covers. And these outlets are rated at 20 amps each. We got two USB-A on the top, two USB-C on the bottom, and they can put out up to 20 volts. That means you can charge your laptop with this. 12 volt cigarette lighter output on this side. And if we turn this around, we've got the input. We got AC input and solar input. The solar input can go up to 95 volt DC, 650 watts. For the record, these are my own handwritten labels. The unit, when it original came, it did not have any labels or sticker on here, so I have to make the labels myself. We're going to pop out fuse here in case it got overloaded. If we turn this around, and we got all the specs of the unit on this sticker. Over here on this side, we got two battery expansion ports so that you can increase the capacity of the unit. On the top of the unit, we got two wireless charger. Each can put out 15 watts. And it's completely waterproof, so even if you spill water on here, you should be fine. I got my phone on the wireless spot, but it's not charging the phone yet because in order to charge the phone, you need to turn on the DC output. Now you can see it is charging. And it's charging at about 7 watts, 8 watts. I don't see a lot of power stations that have this feature. Having two wireless stations right on top of the power station is a very convenient way to charge your phone. You don't have to plug in anything and then when you're done or even when you're not done, you can just remove the phone anytime you want. There's no need to unplug anything. It's advertised to have USB-C that can put out from 5 to 20 volts. So I want to see if it can be able to charge my laptop because it requires 20 volts. Press this button to turn it on and then let's plug it in. It's charging. You can see it's charging at 32 watts. Let's try the other side as well. Yep, it's charging. 35 watts. There you go. Let's talk about the AC output. So last night before I went to bed at around 10 p.m., I turned on the AC and I just left it on. The output was zero and I didn't plug it into anything. And the state of charge was at about 76%. Right now it's 10 o'clock in the morning so it's been 12 hours. And look at this. The state of charge right now 56%. So during the 12 hours of not using anything, there's no output. It uses up the battery capacity 20%. It uses up one-fifth of the battery capacity within 12 hours. That means if your battery is 100% and you turn on the AC and you're not plug it into anything, just leave it on like this, it will completely empty your battery in about two and a half days. Even though it's not using anything, I can feel the heat coming out of the side here. It's not hot, but it's warm. Same here on this side. It's warm. So that is where the power consumption comes from. 
The process of turning DC power from the battery into AC produces a lot of heat and that is where the energy consumption comes from. Even when you're not using anything. This is not an isolated problem with this particular power station. It applies to all power stations and all DC to AC inverters. So that means if you need to run some small electrical devices for a long period of time, for let's say 8 watts, it's not very efficient. Yep, just being turned on consumes a lot of power. This EcoFlow power station does exactly the same. It will use up battery power when the AC is on, but I'm not plugging in anything. Let's go ahead and test the AC output. I want to see if it's able to run a microwave. I want to be able to heat up the water and make fire. This is 700 watts. It's not powerful, but it's small and portable, so it's good for camping. Got my water ready. Let's turn on the AC. And we are on. I want to measure the inrush current to see how much it can handle. Let's do one minute. I think we got 4.9 amps on the inrush current. And we are running at 1166 watts. It's not quite 700 watts that I stated on the microwave, is it? You can hear from the microwave, it sounds fine and it operates normally, so that, that's pretty good. And we are done. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, it's, that's hot, oh my. See this steam coming off? I can't even touch it. 79, about 79 Celsius. It's ready to make fire. Now I will just pour my boiling hot water on top. See how nicely it cooked the meat. Yep, just like that. Smoking hot. We're not done yet. This is not complete without some sriracha. And hoisin sauce. There you go. Far right in the middle of the jungle. By the way, if you have never tried fur before, I would highly recommend you to try one. Not this particular one though, it's from Costco and it sucks. Without my jungle ingredients, that is. But go try the real pho at the real Vietnamese restaurant. It's gonna be the best noodle soup you have ever had in your life. I promise. Let's mix it up and show you what it looks like. Oh man, it smells so good. Mm. I wasn't hungry before I made this, but now I'm hungry. Very hungry. The next question is, can it run an AC? Let's find out. Over here I have a 1100 watt air conditioning unit. I have plugged it in. Now let's turn it on. All right, it receives power. Now, turn it on. Now the AC compressor kicks in. Let's see how much power we're using. About 1000 watts. So how cold is it in there? Let's find out. And we've got, yep, negative eight in there. So very cold inside there. And it seems to be working great at about 1000 watts output. Let's go ahead and do a load test. This power station is rated at 1800 watts continuous. Let's give it a try, shall we? I got my electric water kettle, full water here, and it's rated at 1500 watts. Wow, right on, 1,533 watts. Let's plug some more things in it. I have a heater that runs at 400 watts. You ready? 
it's on 1800 2000 watts 2000 watts let's see how long it's gonna last all right shuts down after about what, three seconds the error code is e211 and on the manual it is ac discharge overload let's try something else this power station is rated at 1800 watts i want to max it out and try to reach the limit of the power station let's try to hit the first all right it's stable at around 1100 watts let's go ahead and try the heat gun 1600 all right we're not getting there yet let's try a light bulb oh we getting there 1786 okay very close to 1800 i've got one more thing a 60 watt light bulb it's over 1800 now let's see how long it's gonna run before it shuts down 1840 it's over 1800 now oh yeah shuts down after i would say about 15 seconds or so when it's over 1800 watts let's try again and this time i want to keep it just below 1800 ac on all right my heat gun is on 500 watts next one is the heater Whoa. over 1800 watts but it will go down when the heater is hot enough 1650 let's try my light bulb 1690 one more light bulb very close to 1800 watts let's see if it's gonna keep up with this output or is it gonna shut down we got 67 percent state of charge now i'm gonna let it run for a few minutes all right it's been running for almost 10 minutes and still going strong i think this test is definitive enough I'm gonna go ahead and turn off should be enough for this test now so there you have it for this test it consistently deliver very close to 1800 watts without any problem at all and I have drained the battery from 67% now down to 45% and it's still going so it is confirmed that it can deliver close to or up to 1800 watts until it has no more battery power. I believe it's programmed to shut down anything above 1800 watts and that number is pretty accurate. So if you go over 1800 watts, even though just a little bit, the BMS would shut it down. Another question is, can you use a unit at the same time it's being charged? In other words, can it input and output at the same time? Let's find out. So right now it's charging at about 1000 watts. I already plugged in my light bulb here. Let's turn it on. There you go, light bulb is on and it's consuming about 52 watts while it's charging at 1000 watts there you go you can use the unit while it's charging at the same time another question is what if you use it too much while you're charging it let's find out i got my heater here let's turn it on 600 700 800 you can see the charging rate is decreasing from 1000 to 600 when i put more load on the unit i believe this is for preventing the unit from getting too hot it's preventing overheat 
Let me show you what happens when I turn this on high. Ready? 1100, 1200, 1300. You can see as I increase the output, something happens here. Oh, it trip. Let me show you what happens. I've got the power station plugged in here and it's overloading my power strip and you can see the switch is at the off position. This power strip is tripped. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. There we go. We got power. So there you go. When you are charging the unit from an outlet and you are using it at the same time with a high load, the power comes straight from your outlet, not from the power station. And if your output is more than 1500 watts or even closer to 1500 watts, it will trip your power strip or the circuit breaker in your house first before it trip the power station. So when you are using something with a higher load, make sure just to unplug it and use it straight from your power station because this is rated at a higher power than your outlet. So if you plug it in and use it at the same time, your outlet will trip first. The power station can be controlled using Bluetooth. There are a few functions that can only be controlled by the Bluetooth app. So you have to download the Bluetooth app in order to use these functions. On your phone, in the App Store, search for all powers. And it pops up two apps on my phone. This is the one that I use, the All Powered version 2. I already downloaded it, so let's go ahead and open. In order to connect to the power station, you have to press and hold this button for three seconds to turn on Bluetooth. Now on the app, we can start connecting. Click on the power station and it will connect. So you can see 94% state of charge on here. Exactly the same on the power station. On this app, we will show you the input and the output in real time. You can turn on the AC. There we go. Now the AC is on, on the power station. You can also turn on the DC. Now it's on. Click here in the corner. Work mode is the charging speed. We have three charging speed. Mute mode will charge at 400 watts. Standard mode will charge at 1000 watts and fast mode will charge at 1500 watts. And these functions are only available on this app. You cannot have any control for these function on the unit itself. And that's the thing I don't like about this app. There should be a way to change the charging speed right on the unit itself without having to go through your phone. The eco mode will allow the unit to automatically shut down after a certain time. And these are all of the functions on the Bluetooth app. There are not a lot of control on this app either. And a few controls that you have on this app is only available on this app and not on the unit itself. We are on fast mode and it's charging at 1500 watts. Let me see if we can change the setting while it's still charging. Let's go to standard mode. So there you have it. You can change the setting while it's still charging. So now it's charging at 1000 watts and that is standard mode. Let's change again to mute mode. See what we got. The fan significantly slows down. 
That's really mute. I can barely hear anything. Can you? It's very quiet and it's charging at 372 watts. I like this setting a lot because I can be able to adjust the charging rate in real time without having to unplug the AC cable and plug it back in. That would be a lot of hassle. I've been charging it on standard mode at 1000 watts, but when the battery reaches 81%, it starts to reduce the input. Now it's 940 instead of 1000. When it gets 82%, it goes down to 880. So it looks like it's throttling down when it gets more than 80%. It doesn't cut down all the way down immediately, but it rather does it slowly, step by step. So now it's 83%, it goes down again to 820 watts. So the charging rate doesn't get cut down significantly abruptly. It does it slowly over time. Every 1% increments. You see now it's 85% and it's being reduced down to 700 from 750. So it's cutting down slowly, step by step, but not abruptly down. So that is still pretty good. It's still charging pretty fast. So how does a power station work on solar. I got it outside so I can charge with my solar panel but first of all safety inspection by my boss. Looks okay? Alright we're good to go. I have two 327 watt solar panel connected in parallel. Each can put out about 62 volts open circuit. Let's plug it in. And we are producing 293, 307, 331, 343, 345, about 350 watts. So there you have it, it works just fine with 62 volt solar panel. I have charged the battery up to 100%. Let's go ahead and do a capacity test. I'm using this kilowatt meter to measure the capacity of this power station. I'm using a small 400 watt heater as a load. Let's turn it on. We're running stable at 389 watts. It's exactly the same number on here. So this screen is very accurate. And according to this screen, it will take about two hours. It's been about three hours and we only have about 9% left. The capacity is 0.94 kilowatt hour. The power station shuts down at 5% and if I press on the AC output the LED just blink but it does not turn on so it prevents the AC from turning on. And this is for protecting the battery from being over discharge. So now my meter already shut down. I need to unplug this and plug it into another outlet so I can see what we got on here. Let's see what we got. Total capacity 0.96 kilowatt hour. Total time two and a half hour. So how efficient is this power station? Here is my calculation and it turns out to be close to 90% efficient. Most DC to AC inverter efficiency is between 80 to 90 percent and at close to 90 percent. This is one of the most efficient inverter you can get. This power station has a pure sine wave output. That's very important if you have sensitive electronics, computers and audio equipment. So how pure is it? Let's find out. Let's turn on my scope here. I got my suicide cable ready. Let's turn on the AC output. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, that is a good sine wave. 
Now let's put it on the load to see if it's still holding up. Got my small heater here plugged in. And let's see what we got here. Yeah. We're running at about 400 something watts and the sine wave still looks nice. There's no ripple effect, no changes. That looks beautiful. Let's turn this off. Beautiful. This power station also has a UPS function. And UPS stands for uninterruptible power supply. When you plug in an AC outlet on the side here, it will charge your unit and it also powers all of the AC outlet on the front. So my laptop is plugged into this outlet and it's not being powered by the battery. It's powered by the outlet that I plugged in here. I have removed the battery from the laptop and you can see it's empty on the bottom of the laptop there. On my screen it says no battery detected. So if there's no power coming to the computer, it will shut down immediately. The power station is advertised to have 15 milliseconds respond. That means when you cut off power from the outlet, it will transfer power from the battery to the computer within 15 milliseconds. Let's put that to the test, shall we? Are you ready? Yep, there's not even a flicker on my laptop. So the transfer of power is fast and smooth. The power station acts as a real UPS and everything that you plug in here, when there is a blackout, it will remain powered. Wow, check this out. My laptop uses little power that it doesn't even register on the screen, say zero watt output. Let's see what happens. If I unplug, there you go. Yep, that's probably because it used so little power, not enough to register on the screen. All in all, this is an excellent power station. The specification on this is similar to other competitive power stations or even better. It even has features that other power stations don't have, like UPS and two wireless charging ports on the top of the power station. And that's all for now folks. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.